Good morning, everyone. Mr. Dwyer and I say welcome to a new month because it is Monday, March the 1st, and it is day eight in the schedule. And we begin this day, this week, this month, by pausing for a moment to remember that we're always in God's presence. And we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly father. For he makes his son rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers and sisters only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we pray. Eternal Father, turn our hearts to you and grant that as we seek always the one thing necessary and carry out works of charity, we may be dedicated to your worship in word and in deed. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. St. John Bosco, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We say together, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And good morning to everyone. Bam! If you paid attention to that gospel, it should have hit you right between the eyes. Because it says, Do not love only your friends, but also love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you. This is a tough, tough gospel. And... It is similar to Friday's gospel, in which Jesus said, if you have, if, you, if your brother has an offense against you, you need to leave your gift at the altar, and you need to take the lead in being reconciled with your brother, and then come back and offer your gift. That also was a difficult gospel to hear. In fact, it was so difficult that three people at different times who had been to Mass in three different places on Friday came and said to me, Father, this is really difficult. Do I have the capacity to live this out? The same thing is true today. We hear this gospel. Our natural inclination is to want to get revenge on our enemies or those who do us wrong. I think almost all of us feel that way. I know I feel that way. If somebody has offended me, I want to get back at them. In fact, in Jewish law, it was necessary that you hate your enemies. Jesus comes along and preaches something entirely different, unlike what anyone else had said before. Love your friends, but also love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you. The thing about Christianity, about following Jesus, is that sometimes left to our own devices, it is not very easy. And that's why I think Jesus says today, pray for your persecutors. Also, pray for yourself, I pray for myself, that I may have the grace and the courage and the ability to love my enemies, even when they don't love me back. This is not something that happens necessarily automatically. It is something perhaps that takes a great amount of time. Last year, I saw a posting that said, today is October 1st. Pray for someone with whom you have had a difficult time. By January the 1st, your relationship with that person will be different. 
I was pretty astounded by that. And I said, you know, there are one or two people in my community that I have a difficult time with. And so I decided that for those last three months of the year, last year, I would pray by name for those two uh, Salesians with whom I live and pray that hopefully we would have a better relationship. And I will say that with one, the better relationship came uh, shortly after January. With the second one, the better relationship came just about a month ago. We pray for better relationships and we pray not that that person may change, but we pray that we may change. And I can say that my way of looking at those two Salesians was different after my three months of praying for them than it was before. So yes, this gospel hits us right between the eyes. It is difficult to live by, but not impossible. Have a good day. Good morning, I'm George. Please pay attention to the following announcements. Salesians Art and Yearbook Club will be meeting after school Tuesday from 3 to 4. If you're interested in participating, please contact Mr. Manning, Ms. Garcia, or Yearbook Club President Armando Jimenez. Also, the Yearbook Club is looking for your original artwork to showcase on next year's cover. Initial sketches and drawings are due by March 3rd, with finalized versions to be completed at a later date. If you have any questions, contact Mr. Manning at mmanning at salesianhigh.org. We look forward to seeing your work. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I know you like to make TikTok videos. I know you like spending a good amount of your time watching Netflix or Hulu or Disney+. Plus. You participate in theater in middle school. You want to be a cameraman someday or work in photography. You like writing short stories or imagining your own films that can one day be shown on the big screen. Well, this is your chance to shine. The Salesian Players are hosting for the first time ever a student short film festival. We are seeking scripts, film ideas, actors, editors, and more to participate in the process of learning how to make your own short feature film, like the ones presented at the Tribeca and Sundance Film Festivals. There will be an interest meeting Thursday, March 4th at 4 p.m., so contact Mr. Dwyer at kdwyeratsalesianeye.org or the Salesian Players at thesalesianplayers at gmail.com to register and learn more information. We look forward to hearing from you. A special announcement from Grigio. Grigio's editorial staff has determined the winners of its first annual winter writing competition. Second place goes to... Junior Adriano Medeiros for his poem, The Erosion of the Self, an evocative reflection on how our personalities change with the seasons. And the grand prize is awarded to... Hamza Malik for his short story, Rise, a touching and emotional narrative on life during a pandemic. All of the competition submissions were exceptional and answered the prompt in exceedingly creative ways. And starting today, you can read them all on Grigio's website. A selection of pieces will also be featured in the upcoming print issue of Grigio. A link to Grigio's website can be found on the extracurricular page of the school website or directly at grigiolit.wordpress.com. Congratulations to all the participants and winners. <laughs> I'd pay to go to this. <laughs> He's doing better than AJ. <laughs> Thank you.
Have a beautiful day, and it's a great day to be an eagle.